Hey, Chris, we here today. We're gonna be talking about how to add LED light strips to your Ender 3. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna add LED light strips to an Ender 3. It has the light strip going across the top. I 3D printed a light bar, so that way I could see my prints if it's dark out here, or if I wanna know the machine's on, I wanna be able to see my prints through Octopi. And just in case you wanna set up Octopi, I have a tutorial right here. If you remember a while back, I put LED light strips on my shelving, and I have quite a bit left over. So I thought I'd make a project where I could actually put these LED light strips that I have left over to use, which was add them to my Ender 3. Now, this one's an Ender 3. This one is actually a Disway. It's like an Ender 3 clone. Now, they do sell light kits that you can buy for this, but they're around $30 to $40 on Amazon. And if you have stuff laying around like me, like LED light strips and some wires and some connectors, we can make use of those pretty easily and make an LED light strip pretty inexpensive. And especially if you have multiple printers like me, this is the cheaper way to go. Now what you're gonna need is basic soldering skills, some LED light strips, some 18 or 12 gauge wire, a fuse holder, and a 20 amp fuse. And that's just for safety. And that was something that my brother told me that I should add onto the system. Originally I had this one wired straight and he works on cars and other 24 to 12 volt systems. And he told me you really should have a fuse just for safety. So it's just an added precaution. And at this point, this is a disclosure. I'm not responsible for your safety, nor your equipment. So if you're doing this, you're doing this at your own risk. Now I've had this set up for about a month now. I haven't had a problem. The Ender 3 is actually a 24 volt system and these are only 12 volt. And I'm going to show you a little trick that you could do to make these actually 24 volt without a voltage regulator. But if you want to go down the voltage regulator, I suppose you could wire it that way too. We're actually going to hook it straight to the power supply and it has multiple connections. So I thought instead of trying to use that little jack in the back and try to solder and rig and everything straight to that piece and have more wires in the way, I thought it's really nice to just be able to go right from the power supply and run it right up the rail where you wouldn't see it. So that way I could go right from the power supply to the lights. And I don't know why people don't take advantage of those connectors, but they don't. And a lot of tutorials that I saw have you putting in those connectors on the back. I think they're T something. I'll put what they are right here. Connectors and connecting it right from there to the actual unit. But you have connections all inside the power supply. So why not take advantage of them? The first thing we're gonna do is is take the power supply actually off the unit. So I'm gonna power these down. Obviously you wanna power these down and disconnect them from power. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the power. The power is off. We're gonna take off the plug. Plug is disconnected, no power going to the system. Now the next thing you wanna do, if you can see it back here, is disconnect the power to the actual motherboard of the printer. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that. It's just a pull. If you put this printer together, you should know that. Okay, so that's disconnected now. I'm gonna take the Allen key that originally came with your printer. We're gonna be going for this screw first, and we'll disconnect it. We'll just bring it out a little bit. We'll just loosen these up first. There's only two screws. Completely take out the bottom one first. All right, that screw's completely out. Now we're gonna grab it from the back here and we're gonna disconnect it right from here. We're just gonna keep unscrewing it until it comes free. And we're gonna leave the screw in place so we don't lose them. All right, and that's disconnected. Your power supply is free. All right, so while we're here, we're gonna take our two wires, get your positive and a negative, and we're gonna just try to figure out how much wire we're gonna need to cut. What I like to do is we're gonna get around the back and I'm just gonna run it along the rail and kind of figure out how much wire I'm actually gonna need. And I'm gonna go probably a little bit more than what I need. So I figure I need about that much. So that's where I'm gonna cut the wires. That would be the length of, from the power supply to the actual light. Let's cut those, boom. All right, so we're over at the workbench here. You have two hexagon screws there. We're gonna take this Allen key, which came with your printer. We're gonna go ahead and take these out. And if you open it up, you guys can see what I was talking about. You have all these connectors that we can use to easily connect lights or any other thing that we could possibly think of that we need power for, as long as it's a 24 volt system. So, and if you could see, there's a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Basically, what we're gonna be looking at are either one of these two screws or one of these two screws. So there's your positive, there's your negative. And it has a little plastic door. We're just gonna reach up and pop that open. 
Your positive end, we're gonna be connecting the fuse. Now, you can buy these really inexpensive on Amazon. I forget what the price is, but I'll put it right down below here. We're gonna get a 20 amp fuse. We're gonna stick it right inside here, push it right in. My brother was the one, and if you wanna see that video of when he came to visit and you can meet my brother, he's a big motorhead. He works with a lot of cars, wiring cars, wiring trucks, all kinds of different things. He's really talented, and he knows all about 12 volt systems and 24 volt systems. So I asked him for advice on this and he said if you're gonna do this make sure you put a fuse on it now this unit actually does have a fuse built into it and that's one of the benefits is if you went with this connector here you'd have access to that fuse and that's why a lot of people probably go for this connector like I said we have all this room inside this box and we have these connectors I just wanted to take advantage of those contact points and it'd be easier for me to run wires straight up the rail there so like I said there's many ways to do this many ways to skin a cat this is the way I'm gonna do it. All right, so we're going to take this kit here, and this was another inexpensive thing. It was like 10 bucks, and I've had this. It's not like I bought it for this project. It comes with a bunch of connectors, and what we're going to shoot for are these connectors over here. These are the connectors we want. They're just little U-shapes, and they'll fit right in there. I'm going to try and set this up so we can loop this to the back like that, and that fuse will be right in there. The reason why you want the fuse is if anything goes wrong, this will break the connection, the electronic connection. It'll pop, and then you'll have to replace it or figure out what's wrong with it that made it pop, and that way it's just to prevent fires, guys. We really want to do this to prevent fires. All right, so the red one wasn't fitting, so we're just going to take this connector, we're going to spin the wires like so, and we're going to shove it right in there. And what you want to see is just a little bit of the wires right there. You don't want it too far out. You don't want it too far in. We're going to take this tool. We're going to go ahead and crimp this wire like so. So we go ahead, push that right like that. And now we got a little indent and it should not come off. Nope. It's not coming off. And there you go. There's your connection. So we have this connection right here. Now we're going to take the red wire again right here. And we're going to strip the end of this wire. Wire stripper like so. And you strip off the wire with the wire stripper. And that's what you should get. So we could go ahead and solder these two wires together. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and use a butt-up connector. So basically you put one end in. You crimp it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Use this end. Push it all the way in. Like so. And then crimp it like so. Now it's not going anywhere. Got a nice butt up connector. All right, so we got the positive side done. Let's go for the negative. And the only thing we have to do on this one is just add this connector. So the first thing we're gonna do is strip the wire. Boom. So now we got the wire stripped, just twist it. Now we'll take one of the U-kind of clamp looking things. We'll stick this right in here, like so. We don't want it sticking out, we want it right about there. Nice thing about this kit is you just match up the colors. And we'll take this, and we're gonna go ahead and clamp it down. And we're gonna go ahead and crimp this bad boy down. Crank down on that. And just do a tug, make sure it ain't gonna come out. We're gonna go ahead and strip the ends of these wires. All right, so this is what the end result of your wire should look like. You have the C on the one side and then you have a just bare wire on the other side. And then the positive has the fuse in it with the C on that side and now we're gonna strip this wire. Stripped, twist. All right, so now that one's ready. So now you got your two wires ready. Now it's time to play with LED lights. All right, so heat up your soldering iron at this point, guys, which I have my little base station going right now. The information that I'm about to give you, I'm going to leave down below. I got it, the information off of a website, and it said that you could turn the 12 volt into a 24 volt, wiring them in series. So by doing that, we have to keep the same amount of light. So we're going to be doing this in two sections, and they have to be the same size. So whatever section I cut here, I have to do the same length again. Because if you don't, when you do wire them, and one's longer than the other, it'll be taking the brunt of the voltage and we're trying to keep the the voltage even so basically they have to be the same length so two light strips exactly the same length with the exactly the same amount of lights and this is how we're going to turn 12 volts because if you add 12 and 12 it makes 24 that'll make 24 volts so the first thing we're going to do is if you notice the 12 volt and then you have b r g we're going to put those together mash all those as one so solder all those as one. We're gonna do this on both of them. This, this one already had solder on it, this one does not. So we're gonna go ahead and add solder and then connect them all together. Trying to move too fast, guys. You gotta add flux. Makes it a lot easier. So we're gonna take our flux, and we'll just add a little chunk right there. No, I did not claim to be the best solder in the world. Take your soldering iron, melt the flux a little bit, get it on the, the pads, heat it up. And now what we're gonna do is gently take some solder, and just rub the pads. 
solder on the pads and that's fine we want those two to connect connect the RGB because we're not using individual colors we're actually going to be using the RGB is just your negative all your RGB should be together your 12 volt should be separate and that's how they should look and now what we're going to do is put them right next to each other and we're actually going to put this 12 volt to the negative which would be the RGBs we're going to we're going to go ahead and connect those two together and we're going to solder these two right here in the middle together so we're going to add some thick solder All right, so now those are one. Basically, if you check out the website that I have in the description, it says that your positive will be coming in and your negative will be going out. And then in the middle, because we did this little joint, it actually makes it 24 volt. That's what it would look like when it's in series. Now we have to connect our wires. So the first thing we wanna do is tin the wires. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. First, I like to dip the wire in flux, heat up the wire. Now we'll do the negative one, same way. Twist it, dip it in flux, heat it up, so that way the flux is all in there, and then bring it over to the solder. And we'll just go ahead and just get all that solder right in there. So we'll do the easy one first. We'll go ahead and just add the negative, which is right down here. We added that in, now we have the negative lead, and now we just need the positive lead. All right, we'll just put this right here. Lay it, lay, it, lay it down like so, and just come in here and see if we can make a connection happen. And now we have our connection. All right, so I'm at the point now where I want to wire it up. What we're going to do is, if you forget, right on the bottom here, it'll tell you positive and negative. So I'm going to go for this rail right here for the positive. Just unscrew that a little bit. And there's a metal plate. We want to try and get it under the metal plate like so right underneath that metal plate right there like so go ahead and screw that down nice and tight all right and we're going to take the negative now we're going to go over here to the negative right next to it not right next to your other negative power supply right there we're going to bring that up a little bit and we're going to just gently slide this in like so i'm going to screw that down all right so what we're going to do now is i'm going to try and move this over and make it so nothing touches and we're going to do a test we're going to make sure that this works before we put it back into our machine and we'll go ahead and plug it up and make sure everything works make sure nothing is touching and as you can see our lights are working with the power supply now all right so now we have working lights now we got to put it all back together and get it ready for the printer disconnect the power and we're going to tuck everything into this housing and just have these wires sticking out push this plastic piece down in place and try to get everything situated so it's out of the out of each other's way i did the uh screws off camera but once because you, you gotta kind of hold it up so you're not bending your wires but the wires sneak out right like this so there's no pressure on the wires the only thing is inside the box you gotta kind of just finagle that fuse you could make the fuse go out the bottom and do it that way i like everything in close so i want to kind of keep it neat now we'll go over to the machine and start the installation process so what we're going to do from here is i already started i got this side off we're going to take the allen key that was with the machine if you remember when you put it together and we're just taking off these bolts right here so just taking off the the top crossbar member so we're going to just take that off completely like so and then what we're going to do is take off one of the ends. So I'm going to go for this end right here, take that off like so. And I'm going to take the light bar piece and I want to put the open bar. And I might make this available on Thingiverse or My Mini Factory, I'm not sure yet. And we're going to just push this right on here. You can actually attach the lights right to the bar if you wanted to. I didn't want to do that. I want to go with a nice clean look. All right, I placed it right in the middle like so. And we'll just put the cap back on. Another thing is I added these onto my printer. So I'll just take those out so that way we have a clear cavity in the back. So now it's a nice clear cavity that I can put those wires in. And I can actually use these to hold the wires in. So why this is open like this, I'm going to go ahead, take the unit, slide the wires in like so. And we'll take these and I'll leave a link for these down below. They're really nice to have. They're V slots. All right, so this made this so much easier to hide the wires and install this. All right, so we're at the point where we have it almost installed. So what I want to do is take some black tape, some black electrical tape, and I just want to hide this connection a little bit before we put it together. No, it's not the prettiest way to do it and probably a better way to do it, but that's what I'm going to do for now. 
just so that there's no bare connections in there. And at this point, this piece and connect it so we can figure out how we're gonna put this on. So do recommend a little bit of crazy glue in there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, take the strips off and go ahead and put that in there so that way I can connect this on like so. All right, I got both sticky backs off and what I'm gonna do is just put a quick line of crazy glue. And if we ever need to change it out, I mean, you could still pull this off or print a new one. Nice tight fit. Let me finagle with the wires a little bit and get it into place. Putting the final touches on the power supply connection. I made the wires a little bit too long. If you do find that, you're better off cutting from this side instead of up here and just snaking the wires correctly and you could just rewire them if you need to. I didn't, I figured out a way to tuck them a little bit and it worked out really well. We'll put this connector back together in the back here, like so. Make sure it's out of the way. Connect it back to power. Go ahead and put these back together at top here. All right, she's all back together. Moment of truth. Let's turn her on. And there we go. We got a nice set of lights. guys now I have both my Ender 3 and my Disway with lights connected to the power supply. So like I said earlier, there are easier ways to do this. I just had the stuff lying around. I had a lot of extra wire, but I've been testing this with my first Ender and it worked out really well. And I found several tutorials on how to do this. And like I said, I'll leave links down below so you don't have to take my word for it. This was just me playing around and I just wanted to share. I, I wanted lighting on my Ender 3s because a lot of the times the lights are off in here even though they're smart I can turn them on but it's just nice that it has its own independent lighting so I can just see what's going on so that's it for me guys if this was helpful make sure you like subscribe and ring that bell if you want to get notifications on my future videos and remember you could do anything if you put your mind to it later guys you're still here you haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there.